a lot of agency owners I talk to, they'll say, hey, I, I pay out 10% of revenue for all my affiliates or referrals or, or whatever it is. But like, where's that on your website? Is it actually in writing? Is it consistent? Um, you should have a full page dedicated to it. How much have you paid in the past? What does that process look like? How do you track it? What lead magnets do you have? Have a, a really solid affiliate page, like your website.com slash affiliates, or mm. uh, like if you go to accountsbalance.com slash referrals, you can kind of see what it looks like. And it really breaks it down. It's nice. It's clean. It's easy. It, it sticks in their mind. And, and that's a big part of it too. Hey everyone, this is Mark DeGrasse, the president of Digital Marketer, and this is the podcast that keeps you up to date on everything you need to know when it comes to digital marketing. Some of the platforms to be focused on, to the kinds of tactics and tools that are working today. Today, our guest is Nathan Hirsch, the founder of Outsource School and Accounts Balance. And today, we're going to be talking about how he grew a company from $5,000 to $12 million a year with no paid marketing using 100% VAs to do the work, which says a ton about you. That's incredible. How the heck did you manage that? Yeah, yeah I appreciate it. Thanks uh, Thanks again for, for having me on. Uh, like a, a quick background, I was a big Amazon seller. I launched a pretty large Amazon business out of my college dorm room uh, way back in the early days of Amazon, the Wow Wow West, 2008 to 2016. And we sold 25 million on Amazon, but you got to remember there was no PPC back then. It was all you post a product and Amazon gets you customers and, and that was the business. And when we decided to launch our own freelance marketplace called FreeUp to compete with the Upworks and the Fivers of the world, we had to learn marketing from the ground up. We had to learn our own website and learn SEO and partnerships and a lot of the stuff I'm going to dive into. So that was just brand new and eye-opening, but it was also a lot of fun because instead of relying on Amazon and, and doing more B2C, this was B2B and being able to network with other people in the space and, and really just learn marketing from the ground up. That's amazing. Well, and it's uh, it's kind of funny because I, I actually started my e-commerce business, I think in 2007. And so I was part of that original crew where like you posted something and then everything made money. <laughs> it was like, right. this is easy, <laughs> but it's uh, definitely different today. So uh, when you did start that new website, I know you talked about content and how your VAs actually uh, produce the content. And uh, did you how did you start that? Did you actually make any content yourself originally? Or did you kind of say like, hey, we're just going to make the strategy and have other people execute it? Yeah, I mean, we de definitely did things ourselves for a little bit, especially as we were feeling it out. But um, I mean, we we built a team of 30 VAs that were doing everything from sales calls to content to uh, reaching out to podcasts and influencers and all the stuff that, that we're going to dive into. And when we sold the company, Four years later, we had no U.S. employees. We had thousands of VAs and freelance on the platform, but our internal team was 30 full-time VAs in the Philippines running all parts of the business, including our, our marketing team. That's incredible. And it's, uh, you know, for a lot of people, that's a, that's a scary prospect to think that you, you know, could delegate that level of control. So when you say like, the, you know, the 30 people that included the managers actually managing other VAs? Yeah, we had four team leaders. We had uh, two for customer service, one for recruitment, and one for marketing. And and that they or they managed all the other VAs that, that were on the team. That's amazing. And and they were and you did uh, not just articles. I assume you, you do podcasting, videos, and that that was all produced by that team. Yeah, let, let's kind of dive into the organic marketing blueprint. We'll kind of go through all them, and I'll break it down how we set it up. Perfect. Um, so to start off, we have an affiliate program. This is the basis for all your marketing. And you want it to be something that actually stands out, something that doesn't just blend into the crowd, something that you can say on every single call, at the end of every call, at the end of every sales call. And you're going to use this in the future with podcasts, influencers, stuff like that. When I sent you a podcast prep document before this, it had my three companies, Outsource School, Econ Balance, and Accounts Balance, and their affiliate links for podcast hosts to sign up for if they want to. So with free up, we had an affiliate program that was 50 cents for every hour build to someone that you refer forever. So we like reoccurring affiliate programs. And I, at the end of every sales call, oh, by the way, before I let you go, we have this great affiliate program. You get 50 cents for every hour build to someone you refer forever. And I would, when I eventually taught my VAs to take sales calls, they had to stay at the end of every call. When we'd run into people I conversated, we have to bring it up. 
safe, go on podcast, stuff like that. So have that affiliate program, make sure it's not just something you say, make sure it's a full page on your website. That's very clear, very easy, reoccurring revenue. And we do the same thing with outsource school. You get 40% reoccurring our bookkeeping brands. You get $50 a month reoccurring for as long as they're a client. And we tell people, Hey, if you sign up as a client, you can save money and it gets taken right off your invoice. And if you aren't a client, you can just make money on top of that. Um, a few other kind of notes there is when someone creates an account on any of our companies, an affiliate link is automatically produced. They don't have to do anything. They don't have any um, extra work there. And not everyone likes having an affiliate link. So we make it clear, you can send people an affiliate link. You can just introduce them to us and we'll make sure you get credit or the person can sign up and just mention your name. And we'll even backdate it. If you come to us in two months and say, hey, by the way, I referred Bob, we're gonna make sure you get credit for it. We wanna pay our affiliates. and by year three of free up, we're paying out $400,000 a year in affiliate money. That's a lot of 50 cents. Um, but people were talking about us all over the world. I remember being at, uh, getting my first phone call from uh, the referral that said, hey, I was at this conference in China and someone told me about free up and I signed up using their affiliate link. And in my mind, I was like, whoa, I've never been to China. Like someone is talking about me in, in another country. So th that's kind of the basis of everything. And you're going to use that affiliate program for everything else I'm going to talk about. Some people might want to promote your business out of the goodness of their heart or because they really believe in what you're doing. And, and that's fantastic. But a lot of people are really going to like your affiliate program. And I guess my last thing there, you can create someone a custom page. So we would have freeup.com slash digital marketer, freeup.com slash whatever that per person's name is. And their affiliate link would be built into the page. So then instead of sending someone so, some weird affiliate link, um, they would be sending someone to a really nice custom built page that would also track it for them. So that's my first key is just setting up that affiliate program. Oh, that's huge. You know, and, and I think a lot of people don't really appreciate the, you know, the potential of affiliate programs. But I I actually, when I had my business, my e-commerce business, we did affiliate and it probably produced about 20% of our uh, revenue in terms of uh, direct referrals from affiliates. But uh, I actually saw the most successful example that I, you know, not part of, but a competing company was from a company called Biotrust. I'm not sure they still exist, but they were selling supplements and they were doing $125 million a year with five employees. And then, but they had this killer affiliate program. I think it was like 50%, you know, forever cookie. And basically, you know, uh, trainers, because it was a fitness company, were just making tons of money off of it. So just so the audience understands, uh, what's the difference between, say, you know, having an affiliate promote your brand versus having an influencer or sponsoring an athlete or doing all these other kind of uh, similar type referral efforts? Yeah. So that kind of takes us to, to number two is reaching out mm -hmm. to influencers. So when you think of affiliates, it can be really anyone, like it could be a podcast host and we'll talk about podcasting. It, it could be your client. Like when, when, when a client signs up, I mentioned they automatically have an affiliate link um, built up when they get an invoice from us every month at the bottom of the invoice, it says, by the way, you get $50 a month reoccurring for as long as you're a bookkeeping client. So all of that can be there um, for your clients, for random partners, Facebook group owners. Um, but we like to target influencers and we'll have a VA actually reach either reach out to influencers, which is a little bit more advanced or just compile a list of influencers where I wake up in my inbox every day. Hey, here are 10 influencers in your space. Um, and I will hit them up on social media, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever it is. I think I hit you up on LinkedIn. Um, so yeah, like the, the affiliates, when I'm looking for affiliates, I want people that have a community of my ideal audience. The, the first year of free up, I was an Amazon seller. So we target a lot of Amazon sellers. So I went on Instagram and I found all the different Amazon influencers, people who had 10, 20, 30,000 Amazon seller followers. And I would reach out to them and see if they wanted to be an affiliate, if they wanted to um, get interviewed for our blog, if they wanted to just set up a networking call, just really try to connect with those type of people. And you get the, the people that already have a following, aware of your brand, signed up as an affiliate and promoting your stuff. And hopefully you can offer them something in return. And it's a numbers game. You'll get ignored. You'll get rejected. You have to follow up a little bit. And obviously the bigger influencer, the, the harder, but you can get creative there. You can piggyback off um, as you're working with more and more influencers. You can say, Hey, I work with X, Y, Z would love to work with you as well. Or my personal favorite, I'll find people that follow them that are clients of mine and get some testimonials or reviews from them. And I'll send it over to them and say, Hey, a lot of the people that follow you use my service anyway, would love to connect and work out some kind of um, good agreement. So all of these 
parts of my organic marketing blueprint, they, they kind of feed into each other, right? Um, like an affiliate could be an influencer, they could not be an influencer, a podcast host could be an affiliate. Um, but you want to make sure that you're, you're targeting influencers. And every morning I wake up in my inbox to five influencers to reach out to, I hit them up, it's super quick. And that's going to add up over and over time. And you're going to start to work with a lot of really good people in your space. Um, a few last points there. Sometimes the smaller influencers are better. Someone who has 5,000 followers that are really, really engaged versus someone who has a million followers that, that isn't. Um, and you want to you want to make sure it's really relevant. You want, don't want to just reach out to generic influencers. You want someone who's very targeted, at least at first, in your niche. Oh, I love that. Well, and then you had a ton of good tips in there, you know, specifically about the the constant recruiting. Cause I, you know, for a lot of people who say like, oh, affiliate pro programs didn't work for me. I always ask like, well, how much effort did you put into it? Because it's just like any other marketing method where you're not going to make paid media work unless you spend a lot of time on it, not going to make content marketing work unless you spend a lot of time on it. And affiliate programs seem to be the exact same way. Now, with that said, when you approach these people with the affiliate, you know, the five influencers, um, how do you kind of set up the expectation of kind of what you expect? Or do you kind of just do no expectation of what they might send you? Uh, like how much selling do you, you do on on your program for them to promote it? Yeah, so I'll kind of share my my little hack or, or outreach. When, when I reach out to someone, let's say for free up, I would reach out and just say, hey, we'd love to connect. I own free up. I'm not selling them. I'm not really telling them that much. I'm just saying, hey, we'd love to connect. It's pretty easy. And you'll get people that'll ignore you or say F you or whatever that's going to happen regardless. But a lot of times people will say, what is free up? Or they'll go and they'll check out your site. Um, or they'll say, hey, great to connect. We'd love to learn more. This is what I do. And then from there, I, I usually try to just set up a, a, like a networking call where I don't, I'm don't. i not trying to push it hard or sell them hard. I'm trying to genuinely get to know them and their business and tell them about what I have going on. And if there's some way to, to work together, um, explore from there. And it's kind of like a get to know you call. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do. Um, and sometimes there's ways that I can help other people. Like I have a really great CPA that I refer to a lot of our bookkeeping clients because we don't do tax. So if I'm talking to someone and they need a CPA, boom, I'll introduce them to my great CPA. He'll make me look good. And I've helped them, them out. And hopefully they'll try to help me out in the future when the opportunity arises. And there's other examples like that, but that's a small one. That's, that's awesome. Well, and I think it's, you know, we always think, hey, you know what, the referral mindset is not normal for people. Like most of the time they, you know, people are afraid to refer people because they're like, well, I don't know if the service is going to be great or well, if the service isn't great and that's going to reflect poorly on me. Um, and I'm guessing the website, your website does a lot of the work and, the, and then that conversation you're able to kind of convince them. Um, in that regard, though, because I know a lot of people have like 50 affiliate programs, but the, the most successful affiliate marketers I've seen only promote like two or three brands, maybe, maybe only one brand. Um, do you find the same thing with the, the affiliates that really work out for you? Yeah. And, and you want to make it really easy for them. You don't want to put a lot of work on their plate. You want to have good lead magnets that you can give it to them. Like sometimes mm -hmm. with influencers, we'll say, hey, we got this uh, if marketing agency uh, bookkeeping checklist. Would you be willing to share that with your audience? And they're not pitching my bookkeeping service, but they're willing to promote the Z book. They'll take a look at it first, make sure it's high value and that's good. Um, but that's an easy win right there. And vice versa, if you've built up an email list, hey, how can I help you? Well, what are you promoting right now? I'll promote that to, to my email list. So stuff like that goes a long way. And um, one thing you brought up about the website, a lot of agency owners I talk to, they'll say, hey, I, I pay out 10% of revenue for all my affiliates or referrals or, or whatever it is. But like, where's that on your website? Is it actually in writing? Is it consistent? Um, you should have a full page dedicated to it. How much have you paid in the past? What does that process look like? How do you track it? What lead magnets do you have? Have a, a really solid affiliate page, like your website.com slash affiliates, or mm. uh, like if you go to accountsbalance.com slash referrals, you can kind of see what it looks like. And it really breaks it down. It's nice. It's clean. It's easy. It, it sticks in their mind. And, and that's a big part of it too. I love that. Well, and I love that you provide the lead magnets and just make it really easy because a lot of people don't want to be promoting, you know, selling all the time or maybe selling ever, which is, I think, a mistake. <laughs> but some people tend to do that. Like I'm all 100% organic. You want to prioritize your work that will really move the needle for your business's growth, but you're not sure how to do that while keeping up with all the repetitive day-to-day -day tasks. Keep Sales and Marketing Automation Software is designed to help small business teams take their time back from busy work. It helps you organize your customer and lead information in one place, automate follow-ups and appointments, get paid faster, and stay on top of opportunities in your sales pipeline, 
all while freeing your team up to focus on the work that will have the biggest impact. Here at Digital Marketer, we've trusted Keep to help us get real results from our campaigns for 10 years. Visit keep.com slash DM to learn more and get Keep's lifestyle automation guide, which walks you through their proven framework for growth and helps you identify gaps in your customer life cycle. That's keep, K-E-A-P dot com slash DM. Uh, in regards to the, the actual resources that you provide, because the typical affiliate programs are like, okay, you're going to have a list of links, maybe some coupon codes, maybe a few banners. Um, what kind of resources do you give your affiliates to promote the brand? Yeah, we, we found that simpler is better. We'll usually have two, maybe three lead magnets per company. They'll have an affiliate link. We might make them a custom page. And um, and then if we have anything, if we have a podcast, if we have a blog, we'll interview them. We'll, we'll kind of make make them feel special and, and get them promoted to our audience um, if they have something that they want to promote um, as well. So that's kind of how we look at it. it. The second you start going too crazy, especially in a new relationship, uh, that goes south. Now, I've had people affiliates that I've worked with for years and they want more. They're like, hey, your lead magnets are not old enough. Can you make me, can you do a presentation to my community? Can you mm. go above and beyond? And and that's a little bit different, but starting off simple and small is usually my go-to. That's awesome. Now, wh- what kind of money are these affiliates making? You know, I'm saying specific people or, or amounts even, but uh, you know, for for marketer or affiliate marketers that are doing a good job, like how much could they expect to make off of uh, that kind of growing affiliate rate that you got? Yeah, I mean, I think our highest affiliates for free up was 30k a year or 40k a year, which isn't bad for a, a VA marketplace. And um, I think the other thing to keep in mind is, is while some influencers do want the affiliate money, a lot of influencers just want a good resource for their community. They want to be, they want to look good through you. So the biggest thing that I try to preach people is not just the affiliate money, unless I can tell they're really interested in that, but we're going to take really good care of your community. I'm going to circle back with you with reviews and show you we're doing a good job. And, and, and that's what a lot of them care about. If they're referring my, my monthly bookkeeping service, they want to know that I'm not going to screw over their clients and that I'm going to make that influencer look really good. And, and even if the influencer makes 5k a year off me, um, if they have a good bookkeeping resource, they're going to want to work with me more and, and that adds value to them. So it's not always about the affiliate money. Although, like I said, that affiliate program needs to be the baseline for everything. Yeah, that makes sense. No, oh, that's, that's fantastic. So, uh, it, so the actual affiliate program is driving like a hundred percent of the referrals or uh, let's talk about the content side. Cause we, we talked no, about how you're being, no. oh, no. <laughs> yeah, not a hundred percent. I mean, you're it's probably like you, it's probably in that 20, 25%, oh, okay. which is pretty good. And it also depends on, on what industry you're in. Like bookkeeping is a very referral heavy business, right? Like you, that's how a lot of people market. So it could be higher there depending on, on how you do it. But yeah, let, let's talk about content. So this is more of my business partner's expertise. I think you met him, mm-hmm. Connor Gillivan. Uh, follow him on LinkedIn. He posts a lot of great stuff about SEO. Um, but start putting out content right away. When you start a business, you want to say, hey, I'm going to produce one blog article every single week and stick to it. Um, and then increase it over time. Hey, we're going to do two or three and make sure it's uh, it has keywords and make sure that you um, are doing guest blog posts on other people's site and letting other people write for your blog and have criteria for those things. So you want to just start creating a content machine. You could write the first few articles. Connor always does that for for our uh, our business. And then you can eventually hire writers to do it. Now, some of the best content when you're a newer business is actually documenting your journey. So whenever we start a new company, we do a lot of market research. Before we just randomly started a bookkeeping business, we did a lot of market research into space. We started interviewing agency owners and e-commerce sellers. And we took all those interviews and turned it into blog articles for our blog saying, hey, we did this market research. This is why we started the company. And every month we even do a monthly recap of what's going on in our company. Who did we hire? What tools did we build? Um, what process are we working on? Uh, people want to follow that. And it, it comes across very genuine because it is, because we let people know about our success, but also our failures and all of it's published. And it, while it's hard and it can be embarrassing, maybe if you have failures, if you get to that three, four year mark and you've published everything along the way, like we did with free up, and then you're getting into five, $10 million a year, that's super valuable. And people will stay, stay along with you for that journey. And it'll build a lot of trust along with obviously helping you rank on Google and, and all the other benefits of just putting out consistent, high quality content that, that follows Google's rules. Oh, that's, that's fantastic advice. And, and, you know, it seems uh, counterintuitive because I think for new startups, you want to appear legitimate. 
appear like an authority appear like you're not just making this crap up as you go along which as we all know that's exactly what entrepreneurs do <laughs> is make right. solutions as you go but i i do think that's a, a completely modern uh kind of take on marketing and i actually wrote an article about a couple of years ago about spacex and how they they were broadcasting their exploding spaceships and so i was saying like you know what that sounds wrong to say, hey, we failed here, and then we failed here, and we failed here, but it, they used it. You know, it was, it was quality PR that generated interest. Number one, which is what you need as a startup, uh, and then you know that authenticity and that and authenticity. A lot of people overthink. They think they need to share stuff that shouldn't be public. Maybe <laughs> instead of just sharing, you know, you can be selective with the information you share. You don't want it to be a hundred percent negative, right? Like, right. What do you think? Yeah, you I mean, think about this? <laughs> exactly. If you go on social media, like you don't want to hear someone um, like crying about their pet dying on Facebook. Like no one wants to read that. But to an extent, you want to share your ups and downs um, with your business, and that'll build a lot of loyalty. Mm, love it. Now, do you do so? It's exclusively uh, that type of PR content, or because most of the time when I talk to people about content, I say, hey, do FAQ for each one of your products and then write an article about each answer. Like that's that's an easy method. Uh, do you guys use that too or trendy content or do you stick specifically with uh, kind of company development? No, it's not just company development. That's one part of it. But we do do a lot of the stuff that, that you said, either FAQs or like with Outsource School, we post a lot of like, hey, here are tips for interviewing virtual assistants. Here are mm -hmm. tips for running a meeting. Here's what you got to know about hiring from the Philippines. So we'll put out a lot of good content that adds value to people, even if they have been purchased the Outsource School program and that, that builds loyalty too. And Throughout all of our blogs, there there's different lead magnets and freebies and stuff that people can sign up and give us their email address as well. Awesome. Now, do you guys use any uh, user generated content or do you kind of leave that to the affiliates to promote the brand through their content? Yeah. So let's kind of dump it, jump into the next one because that has uh, a lot to do with it. So my personal favorite is partnering with other people in the space. When we were running free up and we had all these e-commerce sellers that were getting VAs from us, we went out to every single e-commerce software company and said, hey, we don't provide software. You don't provide VAs. Let's partner. And they might have a partner directory on their website. They might have um, their own blog or podcast. Um, they might want to do a guest article for our blog. So then from our partners, that's where we get a lot of content too. We have strict guidelines for people that post on our blog, but we'll, we'll reach out to digital marketer and say, hey, you want to do a guest blog swap, swap and um, get that done. So that, that, they all kind of feed into each other, like I said, and and you should be producing your own good content. But as you go, getting your partners to put content on your blog is also another way to to get high ranking um, articles there. Another thing that that we're doing now, um, we interview people in the space, people who are have mm -hmm. stories to, to share, people who have grown and exited businesses, and and we'll turn that into a written interview that ranks high for SEO, and that's good for them because their name's showing up higher on Google, and they have this really good piece to share. It's good for us because the piece is on our website and we're getting a lot of really great content that other people like. So there's a lot of creative ways that you can use partnerships there and partnerships can go further too. We can do an email blast for, for your promotion, do an email blast for our promotion on your list. Um, and the biggest tip for partnerships, and this is where our VA comes in, you, can have, you should have a VA organizing your partnerships. The hmm. biggest issue people have with partnerships is they forget about them. They're not organized. No one's keeping track of them. The owner gets too busy. If you're the organized one on your side, that's going to get you and keep you a lot of great partners. We have it on autopilot where every three months we reach out to these partners. Every six months we reach out to these partners. Every year we reach out to these partners and we say, hey, it's been a while. What are you up to? What do you want to do to cross promote each other? And, and then you kind of switch it up. It could be that blog article, email blast, podcast, YouTube video, whatever it is, and, and continuing to work with the same people and get in front of their audience while promoting their services as well. No, that's, that's fantastic. Well, and, and I love how it all kind of led into each other, even though I'm just making these questions up as we go along. I'm like, oh, that worked out great. It's like I reviewed your thing first. <laughs> but it all makes sense. And I, I think for a good system, it should all fit together in a single line and be reinforcing all the other steps of the process. Now, for people who are looking to get uh, kind of started with this whole process, uh, they're going to need an affiliate program. Uh, do you have recommendations in terms of maybe some of the technical solutions? Because, you know, you have the old ones like CJ, that's a commission junction is one of the, the originals 
I would say. Um, do you recommend going with something like that or going with a more kind of privatized solution that you could set up pretty easily these days with a WordPress plugin? Yeah. So we always build software behind all of our companies. So this might not be relatable for, for everyone, but we like to build a custom client portal. We did that for free up. We do that for our bookkeeping brands and people sign up and the affiliate program is built in there and the links automatically generated stuff like that. Now for Outsource School, we didn't do that because it's our, it's our membership. It's selling courses. We use Kajabi um, and we use a tool called Pay Kickstarter uh, that does our affiliates there. So that's the one I use. There's lots of different affiliate programs out there. If you can build your own, great. If not, Go find a tool and just make sure it's simple. A lot of these affiliate programs, in my opinion, do too much. Uh, you just want it nice and, and easy for your affiliates. Now, for on that side, uh, you know, getting the affiliate signed up, what rate would you recommend? I know it's it's you know product and industry specific, but you know, in terms of somebody who'd be interested in being an affiliate marketer for your brand, what kind of expectations do they have in terms of uh, commission rates or, like you said, uh, fifty cents an hour? Um, how do you, do you have advice for how people should set that up? Yeah. So it, it, the real answer is it depends. If you're more in that course space, usually that 30 to 50% is more standard. If you're more of that customized service, like we 50 cents an hour might sound small, but our margins on VAs are two to four bucks an hour. So it's, it's still a decent percentage on that. Um, and usually in that 10 to 30 range, it is like the bare minimum. Um, you kind of made me think of a point there too. We usually have a base, uh, a base affiliate rate. And then for influencers, we'll, we'll bump it up. So for our bookkeeping, it's $50 a month reoccurring for as long as someone's a client. If someone has a huge community and they're willing to promote us, I'll double that. I'll make it $100 per month reoccurring. So that's another great way to make influencers feel special and 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 be able to, to kind of get them to promote your service because you're offering them more than just the, the status quo. Oh, well, I love how you mentioned the, you know, the no cookie, because I said no cookie, but a lot of people don't know what that means. So <laughs> just so people know with affiliate programs, when somebody clicks on the link and they go to somebody's e-commerce website to buy the product that you're referring, uh, there'll be a cookie generated on the viewer's computer or the browser. And so that cookie will track if they go back to the website later on and purchase or if they repurchase. And so there's, there's a little, you know, some technical aspects to it. But at the end of the day, as an affiliate, the affiliate maker, you can restrict how long that cookie would last. So if somebody doesn't come back to the website and buy from that referral within 30 days or 60 days or 90 days, then it goes away. And even if that person comes back and buys it, you're not going to get credit for it because the cookie expired. Also, people could just delete their cookie. You know, I, I clear my cookies all the time. <laughs> so that ruins everybody's affiliate program. Uh, but it, you, what you want to have, and, and the best I've seen is, is the unlimited. Is that is that kind of your advice? Is If, if you can yeah. go unlimited? Yeah, we'll get affiliates all the time that say, hey, someone signed up, but they didn't click on my link. And they're always scared. I'm not going to give them affiliate money. I'm like, listen, no problem. I got you. I'll do it on the back end. And they're happy. And that's going to make them promote us even more. So we're not trying to, to screw someone out of affiliates. We want to pay our affiliates and we want them to promote us. I, I think that's a great policy. And it's, you know, it, it makes sense because people, you know, the decision process, depending on your product, could be weeks, months, or sometimes even years. And you don't want to miss out on it just because, you know, somebody didn't, uh, somebody restricted the program to 90 days or 30. I've seen 30 days and I'm like, that's just cheating. Actually, the worst thing I've seen people do is, uh, oh, the affiliate program broke. And so we had to reset it. And then they break everybody's links. And then they're like, oh, but sign up for the new affiliate program. And that's yeah, that <laughs> yummy to me. <laughs> That that's a killer. We actually had someone on our team like recommend getting off pay Kickstarter to, to somewhere else. And like if we did that, we'd have to stop everyone's affiliate links and switch everyone over to new link. That alone's not worth it. And that's also why I love custom software because it's yours. It, like it's just not going to, to change. No, I think I think that's great advice. So go unlimited if you can. Uh make sure it's a good rate you know, when you have people uh, sign up and then have that kind of platinum, you know, digital marketer, we have our own affiliate program and we do have platinum and platinum has way more benefits than everybody else. And we usually restrict it to people who contribute a lot. Uh, is that the kind of qualification you usually do for those, those up level ones? Yeah. I mean, it depends. I don't think we're, we don't necessarily do platinum, but we definitely have our, our higher tier affiliates that we, that we bump up and we'll give people perks too. Like with outsource school, we'll, we'll give our highest affiliates free memberships and you can, I mean, I know other people like click funnels will buy them vacations or, or whatever. You don't have to go that crazy, but the, the options are there. No, that's great. Well, and usually the more clever, the better, you know, and, and people, cause it's not just for the person who you're rewarding it's to show the other affiliates like, Hey, 
this could happen to you too. Like keep on sending us some traffic, uh, which is all great advice. So let's see. I, I try to think Let, of, let's like, recap real steps. quick. Yeah, <laughs> that was a lot. So so we got we got affiliate programs, we got influencers, we got content SEO, we got partnerships with other people in the space. I got three more. Um, the next oh, wow. one is podcasts. So we're we're on a podcast right now. I've been on like seven hundred plus of them. Um, our most popular formula to outsource school is the podcast outreach formula. Podcasts are great. It's evergreen content uh, that's going to rank on Google. That's going to get you a bank backlink to your website. Um, you're going to get to meet the top people in your space. Those are the people that have podcasts, and that alone adds a lot of value. Um, you're also it's also going to lead to partnerships or affiliates um, or influencers working with you, and it's going to produce a lot of great content. You can take podcasts episodes that you're on and turn it into written content for your blog and repurpose it for social media channels. So getting on podcasts should be a part of your marketing plan. Make sure you're going on one, two a month. If you've never done it before, and you can learn how to do it. It's not that bad. You'll, you'll get into a good rhythm there. Um, but that's just a, a great way to get in front of uh, lots of people. Now, one thing you want to avoid is going on new podcasts. So there are a lot of podcast hosts out there that will do 10 episodes and then realize that they don't want to be podcast hosts. So I won't go on any podcast that has less than a hundred episodes. Usually if someone gets to a hundred episodes, they're serious about uh, being a podcaster um, unless they're a larger company or one of your partners. Like there can be exceptions to, to the rule there, but have some kind of minimum. It doesn't have to be a hundred, make it 50, uh, whatever you want. And I mean, Make sure that you're you're taking the time to network with the people on the podcast, that you're seeing if they could be a good partner, that you're offering them something in return. Maybe you can interview them for your podcast if you have one or offer them a promotion of their company, whatever it is. You never want anything to be one way. Um, but podcast has just been a great way that we've been able to, to grow our companies and just get in front of other people's community over and over and over and get in front of thousands of, of your ideal customers at once. I love it. Well, and the other thing about podcasts is if you're guesting, it's literally 30 minutes to an hour. <laughs> like it's the right. same as a, a meeting that you would have anyways. And now you get to promote it. Now you get the backlink, you get the bio out there, you get the exposure to an entirely new audience. So I, I completely support that. And we do a lot of podcasts here. So that that's a given. <laughs> well, I got two more in there. Quick ones. All right, um, you go. One One's backlinks, which we we kind of mentioned, but make sure that's a part of your program. Just like every day I reach out to five influencers and five podcasts, I'm reaching out to five blogs that will uh, do a backlink for my website. And I'm looking for websites that have a higher domain rating than me or equal or similar. Um, and I'm reaching out to see if we can do a backlink swap in, a, in an ethical way. So that could be as easy as a guest blog post. It could be a podcast. It could be some people have like directories. We have a partner directory for all our companies. So we'll reach out to marketing agencies and get them listed in our marketing bookkeeping services account balance directory and vice versa. They might link us in their article about bookkeeping or whatever. So make sure that backlinks is a, a really good part of your strategy. And my last thing is reviews. Um, you want to make sure you're asking all your customers for reviews on a notepad. You should have all of your top review sites, site jabber, trust pilot, there, there's other ones that might be more specific to your space, like an e-commerce, there's web retailer, um, Google, obviously, and hit people up for reviews. Uh, they should be real customers. Don't do fake reviews or anything like that. Um, but hey, well, hey, are you having a good experience by the company? Yes. Will you leave me a five-star review online? And usually each person will say, hey, can you copy and paste the review to two places? So I get two reviews out of every person, hmm. two different spots, um, and build it up. When people go in and see our service, these are real customers and we stack up reviews over time. I think when we sold free up, we had hundreds of reviews of people that had good experiences. So obviously make sure you're good at fulfillment and you have a good service and all of that. But once you have that down, get those reviews and, and over time that's going to help you. And if for those of you that have 10 plus reviews on site jab or trust pilot or any of the other directories or review sites, when you look up your business on Google, those are on the top page all the time. So that that's something you should focus on. And Whenever we start a company, the first thing we do is we go to all these directories and we create accounts on all of them. And the one, and that's a quick backlink right there on all those different sites. And then you can start adding reviews to those companies. Ah, oh, that's that's a huge tip too. And it, it's so easy. And I think people um, don't really realize not that that's easy, but it's just so beneficial. And not just for you know right now getting clients, but you know when you go to sell a company, and if you're listening, and you haven't sold a company before. 
all these numbers matter. Like how many reviews you have matter, how many emails in your email list matter, how much traffic you get every single day to the website organically, that matters. These might add hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars to the valuation, and, or it will just lead to the sale itself. Because if somebody's like, oh, well, let me think, oh my gosh, they have a hundred reviews. Oh my gosh, they have like 30,000 articles. Like, ah, you know, and then it all starts to add up, but it creates an asset. It turns your business from, you know, you, the owner executing a bunch of tasks to a business in a system that's sellable. And it sounds like everything that you do, your entire blueprint is based on numbers and volume and execution on a regular basis. And that's, that's an awesome system. So congrats. Appreciate it. Yeah. Feel free to, to kind of steal my blueprint. We teach you how to do it with all VAs at Outsource School. And um, yeah, I mean, anything you do on paid ads is only going to complement what you do organically. Exactly. Well, and this will lead to, like you said, the evergreen kind of traffic that, you know, you do the work right now, you do it once and it could lead to exponential returns uh, over time. So uh, with that said, where can people download the blueprint or learn more about it? Yeah. You connect with me on LinkedIn, Nathan Hirsch. I'm always posting content about organic marketing and using VAs and a lot of the boring stuff like hiring and bookkeeping. That's so important. And go to outsourceschool.com. You can grab some of our hiring packets there. Um, we teach you all of our marketing stuff with uh, with VAs there. And um, yeah, you can also check out our monthly bookkeeping service for agencies at accountsbalance.com. Fantastic. Well, I got to say that you have probably been the most efficient podcast answerer uh, that I've ever had on the show. Like every question you just have like, oh yeah. And then it leads into this and you just, oh, just so much detail. So, uh, thank you for coming on the show. I think you're, you're a fantastic guest. Thanks so much for having me. All right. And thank you for listening. Be sure to hit that follow button. So you can notify when all of our new episodes release, please share this with that friend who's clueless about digital marketing. And don't forget to visit digitalmarketer.com. We're going to access all of our courses, certifications, and training programs. Thanks again, everyone. And we'll see you next time. 